Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. So as you'll likely know, Airfix had a surprise announcement yesterday of the release of a completely new tooled 148 scale aircraft. I was lucky enough to be invited to their press day at Historic Helicopters for the live announcement of this, the Westland Sea King. Now I am not really a big helicopter modeler, and so this particular model release didn't get me all excited at first. I have to say, however, that this changed over the course of the morning as Airfix gave an in-depth look at the research, development and production of the kit. I'll tell you all about that in another video, but what I wanted to do straight away was give you a good look at the kit, as well as my personal thoughts and conclusions after seeing it in detail, so that you can make an informed choice about whether to go ahead and order it. The kit is boxed in Airfix's familiar glossy top opening format, with a good sturdy lower. As you can see, the box is absolutely full to the brim, with sprue frames being paired in recyclable plastic bags, the first of which also contains the separately bagged transparencies. The second bag contains the main fuselage frames, whilst the third has a frame with a lot of smaller components, as well as one carrying the rotor blades. At the bottom of the box we have the familiar Airfix instruction book. The instructions barely contain the cartograph decal sheet, protected by its paper cover, but I'll talk about these in a bit more detail later, as there are some really nice touches here. Also slipped inside the instructions are the familiar and very welcome separate and full colour glossy painting and decaling guides. Again, more on those in a while. Now the instruction booklet is a very familiar format. But one major difference in their layout and approach is that you have to decide very early on which variant you'd like to model. This is because of the range of variants Airfix have chosen to cover in this single kit, so there are various holes that need drilling or filling on the main fuselage and interior floor pieces before construction even begins. There is even some filing of parts required if you're looking at the early variant. This all stems from that versatility of the kit needed to show this single airframe, XV666, during its career of over 50 years. When we get to the actual construction steps, they are completely in line with Airfix's other recent releases. Extensive and detailed three-dimensional renders with colour highlights make them simple to follow, and differences in both construction and painting are called out throughout the build in unambiguous terms. The only thing that could improve them would be to continue more of what they did in the F-35B starter kit, using another colour to indicate cementing areas for example. I can understand not calling out the parts on the sprue frame at each stage for a model of this size however, since it would bloat the instructions a lot, as well as adding cost and development time. Towards the end of the instructions there are more diverging steps based on the built variant, as well as for options such as open doors. There are also several pages for construction of the rotor assemblies, since these are both complex and have provisions for both being normally deployed as well as folded, including the tail rotor assembly. There are also completely different rotor parts for the HAS-1, and the later variants, meaning you could build this kit in a lot of different ways. Overall, the instructions are first rate, pretty much as we've come to expect from Airfix these days. Now I mentioned earlier that there are a few things to point out on the decals. The first of which is that the sheet is large and very comprehensive, and no matter what you do, you're going to have a lot of extras for the spares box, whether high or low visibility roundels, or the various stencils. The second is that decals for the internal screens are provided, and not just that, but in both on and off configurations, and I have to say this level of thought and attention kind of blew me away. 
You get a lovely rendered little map of the UK here, and knowing how nice these decals are to work with, the sheet is fantastic. Moving on to the painting options, as I mentioned before, Airfix have done something very clever here, and the options cover just a single airframe, XV666, or Damien as it was known, through its career. The first scheme is thus as it was built, an HAS.1 in service with the RNAS based out of Coldros in Cornwall, in overall blue and looking very smart. We then come back to it almost 20 years later, still based at Coldros, but upgraded to an HAS5 variant in overall grey and sporting low-vis roundels, looking very much more modern with its larger radar, air intake filter and more efficient rotors. A shorter hop of 7 years to 1995, still in Cornwall but now converted to an HU5 with a bright red nose, floats and tail boom, and some natty Ace of Clubs markings. The final version is still an HU5, but in her final livery of bright orange replacing the red and flying with heli operations in 2022 from Portland in Dorset, less than an hour from where I live. So let's get into the plastic itself. There are seven frames in total, the first one bearing the largest fuselage pieces. As you can see, there is extensive recessed rivet detail across the airframe, as well as delicately moulded textures on areas like the seats. Now hang on a minute, I can hear the rivet counters cry, recessed rivets? The Sea King has raised rivets. Well that's true, but Airfix decided to create these as recessed rather than raised with modelers in mind. It's easier to fill, sand and repair an area of recessed rivets than it is raised ones. Now onto the next frame, which has the internal floor in one piece, we have raised detail true to reality. The other parts all feature fine engraved and raised detail depending on the part and side, as shown when flipping to the reverse. The wheels are finely detailed, as are all the parts, and there is more subtle texture on the back wall piece. Once again, it just gives a great impression of quality and top-notch moulding. The next frame has the lower fuselage, again with extensive moulded details covering its surface. You also have the radomes here, and the fineness of moulding can be seen captured in pieces like this one, with its small holes, or any of these seat pieces, which have complex shapes and often very thin areas, struts, etc. How thin these are can be seen when comparing them to my scalpel blade here. You can also spot some pieces that are going to build up into various sub-assemblies like these winching frames. The finesse can also be seen here in the tail rotor, and overall, once again, looking at the plastic, you're given a really good impression of the kit. The smaller two frames cover the landing gear, lots and lots of smaller pieces that I don't know the names of or don't know their function in the assembly from just looking, but once again, how well everything is cast, laid out and attached to the sprues comes through and is quite impressive. The next frame includes the tail rotor, more pieces for seats, with their subtly moulded texture, and a whole host of other parts I have no names for, but I did spot alternative air intakes for some of the versions, which I can spot no immediate difference in, though I am sure an aficionado could point them out. The final sprue has all of the main rotor blades, and you get a full set of both variants, both early and late. Now I did wonder why this was the case, because maybe the difference could be handled with a main rotor piece with different fillets for the variants, but that would have meant butt joins, because of how thin the parts are, seams and so on. I think this is Airfix thinking of the modeler once again, and not just what's easiest for them. I will also point out that again there is some very fine moulding on this sprue, 
as for the rest of the included plastic. Now I'm not going to give close-ups of everything here, but more like indicative and representative areas and examples. The first of these is the main fuselage, where you can see the rivet detail and prominent features like these tie-downs, which are quite agricultural on the real thing. The other thing is the approach to panel lines. Rather than engraving them, here they have overlapping areas, by a fraction of a millimetre, so that areas are not the same level. This is to recreate that riveted plate look better than engraved panel lines would, and it's a really interesting approach. You can see other raised panels, like this one on the engine cowling, are delicately raised, proud of their surrounding area, making it easy to use washes or dry brushing on them. It's important to remember that modelling is not about a perfectly miniaturised reproduction, which would be impossible, it's about creating the illusion of that, and it seems something that Airfix are very well aware of here. Here I want to show you that lovely seat texturing I mentioned before. Again, this should help us create a convincing facsimile. I believe this is the mesh texture on the engine baffle, which is extremely finely reproduced. Here is the main rotor head for deployed rotors. And here is the main rotor head for folded rotors. This is the tail rotor for the modern versions, showing how finely these are cast. These compressed gas cylinders and their associated detail give you an idea of what's on offer here. This panel also shows how fine the casting detail is. These here are another great example of both detail and options, since the screens and controls at the station vary, depending on variant, so you have different parts, each beautifully executed. Here is that big radar screen awaiting your choice of decal mentioned earlier. And these panels are incredibly detailed. I know any spares from this kit will be repurposed as control panels for other projects elsewhere. Even the curve of these CRT screens is faithfully reproduced. Finesse is not only displayed in panels, but in parts like this whole lightened piece, and the winch part to its left. A close-up of the interior floor with its raised rivets reveals just how much detail is on what could have easily otherwise have been just a more or less flat piece. Here's that textured back panel I mentioned before. There are a lot of wiring looms in a Seeking. Here are some of them on the forward bulkhead. Now I didn't mention the transparencies before, and that isn't because I forgot them, but they needed more of a close-up view to appreciate them properly. Putting my scalpel underneath, you can still read the engraved Swan Morton on the scalpel through the plastic. Basically, this is the clearest styrene I've ever seen, with plenty of options for the variants included. Airfix had a couple of test shop builds at the event yesterday, and here they are built up. Even without paint, you can see how nicely they've come together and the level of detail and finesse that's presented. It has to be said as well that the Seeking isn't exactly a small aircraft. 
and it's certainly a big and chunky piece of plastic when finished, as you can see from me manhandling it here. So what do I think of this release announcement and kit? Well, first of all, the disclaimer. I attended the event at Airfix's invitation, and the review sample was received from them free of charge. Having said that, I'm under no obligation to say anything nice about them or the kit, and I haven't been paid in any other way. Okay, that out of the way. The Seeking is not a subject that has ever really caught my attention. Helicopters are not really my thing, and this announcement didn't blow me away when it was revealed. What did blow me away, though, was what Airfix have done to produce this kit, and the end result. I left the event yesterday with a real buzz to build this kit, because although it's not my chosen specialised subject, I am, first and foremost, a modeller, and this is an excellent model. Producing a kit tracking a single airframe through its history is a really neat idea, and I don't think it's ever been done before. In doing that, Airfix have produced an extremely versatile kit that has a long future lifetime as reissues with different decals and paint schemes without having to change plastic components, thus keeping costs down. If you can't wait for that, however, there is nothing stopping you completing this as any HAS-1, HAS-5 or HU-5 with sparse box or aftermarket decals. The options provided give a multitude of possibilities for dioramas and display, I can think of half a dozen or so just off the top of my head, and I'm pretty sure there will be several of these appearing at the Telford show in November, on club displays and in the competition. The other great thing here is that Airfix aren't keeping us waiting. This kit is going to be available in a few weeks time, so there's enough time to save up a bit of money without having to wait months towards a future release date, which is nice for the impulsive among us. Now, it has to be said that there are no pilot figures or weapons with this kit, and that's because of the range of time that this kit spans, and to include options for crew and weapons for every possibility would have driven up the price considerably, but the spares box or aftermarket should take care of that. Personally, I'd love to see Airfix do pilot sets for its kits in different scales, seated and standing, but it's hardly a deal breaker. I'm interested in how people will perceive the recessed versus raised rivets, in a 148 scale kit, a rivet would be about 0.1mm high, so I am more than happy to have a recessed rivet to create the illusion of a riveted aircraft, rather than have to try to restore any lost 0.1mm high protrusions. Let's see how the rivet counters react. To conclude, Airfix have put a huge effort into this model kit, one which I'll talk more about in the video I'll show about my day yesterday, and they've made a truly beautiful kit, which I think any modeler would enjoy making, regardless of your interest in the subject matter. If you are into helicopters, then you probably want to buy at least two to play with the options, but anyone else looking for their next build, I would not hesitate to recommend this kit. It certainly seems like the king of kings to me. Speaking of airfix, if you want to win the collector's coin commemorating Flight Lieutenant Alan Pollock's protest by Flying Hawker Hunter XF442 through the span of Tower Bridge on April 4th 1968, then you can enter my free draw for that. Details are in my video unboxing of the kit bookmarked above. Alternatively, you can join my YouTube channel as a member, or sign up to my Patreon to be automatically entered into this and other draws with multiple tickets and so a higher chance to win plus have access to my personal Discord channel and other perks. As I'm mentioning that, let me give my heartfelt thanks to all of those wonderful channel members and Patreon subscribers for helping me to make these videos. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, 
and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.